Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Maestro Union, Fury Planet, Crocker, Wilderness Hunter. This is basically an alligator or crocodile man that's a wilderness hunter. I personally bought this figure to use a killer croc variant in my Batman action figure world. I've seen some people going to be using this guy as Leatherhead for their Teenage Ninja Turtle line. Whatever you get this guy for, he looks really cool and the package is very heavy. We have both the regular version and the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive variant. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see, age is 16 plus. Crocker, Wilderness Hunter, Maestro Union. Here is the package. It has a bunch of weapons, removal clothing, the Fury Planet. One side of the package, not too much going on. Other side, you can see Crocker at the back. Comic book is included. Transforms between two styles. This is for Turtles. This will be for Batman. Here he has a bunch of display options and a ton of accessories. Bottom, there is a barcode in case it helps anybody. And here's the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive variant. Wilderness Hunter Crocker. Looks like he has the same accessories but a totally different paint job. In the back, all the accessories and here's that barcode although it looks like Big Bad Toy Store put their own barcode on top of that barcode so with no further ado let's open them up all right now that these figures out of the package here they are with all their accessories laid out they come with the exact same accessories simply in different paint jobs they come with quite a bit of cool stuff we've got a removable tail a shotgun a large hunting knife Four alternate hands, totaling six interchangeable hands, a total of three different necks, some shackles, a hat, and then a couple of pouches or satchels for his gear. But before we take a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figures. So this is Crocker, although I'm going to refer to it as Killer Croc probably for the rest of this video. The figures both feel fantastic. Sometimes when you're getting these sort of off-brand, sometimes they have some quality issues. Not getting any of that from this guy. He's big, he's heavy, he's durable, the plastic feels good, the sculpt, the paint, it's all fantastic. So let's take a look. Both the figures are the exact same sculpt, the accessories are the exact same, totally different paint jobs though. Let's start with his face here. Face, very narrow, very long. He's got the snout, his mouth is articulated, opens up, looks absolutely fantastic inside of there. Look at all the jagged teeth. It's got some articulation. He has the neck that's turned to the right here. He's got a straight neck and one turned to the left. He's got the sort of cut off sort of vest here. Now you can take that off and have him not exactly naked, but shirtless, which is more appropriate for Killer Croc. Look at the sculpt and paint detail on this guy. It looks great. The scales, the leathery skin. Even the vest, nice paint details there. You can see where the tail's gonna plug in. Looks like one of his little pouches is going to attach back there. He's got, looks like single jointed elbows. They go in about 90. His knees, they don't have a lot of articulation. He's kind of stuck in this crouching pose. I had a little trouble getting to stand at first. Just kind of move the legs forward a little bit. Texture on his pants looks good overall. I'm very pleased. He does not disappoint. And a quick look at the other one. Although I must say I prefer the normal paint scheme of the Crocker. This one here, it's got a different kind of green on here. Gives him a very different personality. You can see his eyes, very narrow, very slim. Like he's looking, he's hunting. The inside of the mouth looks a little bit different on this guy. Sculpt's the same, paint is different. The pants are different, these are black. The other guy had blue jeans on. A lot of the same. The jacket's totally different, it's got a bunch of money on it kind of interesting. They're both really cool. I prefer the regular one, but this guy looks fantastic as well. And then, here are the figures broken down as far as they can go, with all of their removable parts detached. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt, which looks absolutely fantastic. Long mouth, snout, very croc or alligator-like. Then, the Big Bad Toy Store paint variants face and head sculpt. Exact same sculpt, 
paint job is excellent on both of them, but quite different. Now let's take a look at their accessories. And I'm not going to look at both figures' accessories as they have the exact same stuff, just painted a little bit different. So we'll look at the main release of Crocker's accessories. And let's start off with his hands. Here's a closer look at the main Crocker's accessories. And like I said, we'll start off with his hands. Here are his hands. He has a total of six of them, three right hands and three left hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his gripping hands. Then his next pair of hands. These are some open hands. They'd be good for grabbing or throwing. And here's his third pair of hands. These are a couple of pointy hands, the index figure sticking out. And I will say with all three of his hands and even his necks, I find the little hole that the ball joint's gonna go into is very tight. I had to dip all these hands into hot water as well as his neck just to be able to insert the head or the hands properly. Seems like once I did that, they seem to work okay moving forward. Just FY, guy's gonna require a little bit of hot water to swap some parts out. Now let's look at his necks. He has three of them. One that will allow him to look to the left, one that will allow him to look to the right, and then one that will have him looking straight forward. It's kind of an odd way to do the head articulation and neck. You'd think they would simply just make the head able to turn and stuff. But the way it's designed, this is, I guess, the only logical way. Here he is with his first neck. This one is looking to his right. And here he is with his head turning to the left. Continue to have to drop these things into hot water just to be able to swap the head. Hopefully it's better over time. But once I have the set up the way I want to, I won't have to do that too much. And here he is with the neck allowing his head to point straight forward. This will be my neck of choice. My display look of choice for this guy. Now let's look at his tail. It is big, it is bulky, it is scaly, and it is spiky. You can see the hole there where it's going to attach to him. It's got three different sort of ball joints in here. A little bit of articulation on each one, but not exactly a lot. Killer Croc really needs a tail, especially when he's going to look like this. And here's Crocker with his tail attached. Figures really starting to come together. I had to dip the tail into hot water to attach it. Not unexpected, but it did really free up some of the articulation on this thing. Now let's look at his hat. Looks like a leather hat. Has a magnet on the inside to attach to his head. And it's got a string so you can have it hang over his back or under his chin, etc. Here's Crocker without his hat. And here he is with the hat attached. Now, it has a magnet to attach to his head. But when it's this far back, it's not really doing anything. To use the magnet, it has to be up here. But then it's kind of covering up his eyes. Of course, you could also have the string sort of holding the hat on his back behind him. This also doesn't look right. Now let's look at his shackles. He has two of them, one for each arm. Shackle itself looks pretty good. Paint job is nice. It's not just silver. It's got a bunch of extra detail on it. It has an actual chain attached. Here's Crocker with his shackles attached. The shackles don't actually open. You have to take the hands off to put them around his wrists and put the hands back on. And I will say, I'm able to swap out the hands no problem now without hot water. Now let's look at this knife and holster. It's a very large hunting knife. Seems to be kind of oversized. Blade looks fine. It's silver. Nice little indent there. Then the handle. Good amount of sculpting detail. Nice paint job as well. And here's this holder for the knife. Looks like sort of a leather pouch. It'll attach to his back via this peg. And you can see all the way through it. Here's Croc holding that large knife. And here he is holstering his knife. Not really a fan of how this looks. Seems like he would easily hurt himself like this. Now for a shotgun and its holder. Shotgun itself, once again, feels kind of oversized. Handle, nice little grip. Nice paint job along the thing. Here's the front. Looks like double barrel with a pump at the bottom. Then we have his holster. Another sort of leather sort of pouch. It has these cloth strips. We have an actual functioning buckle here that you'll have to attach both pieces to, and it looks to be adjustable. Here's Croc holding that gun, pointing it right at you. And here he is, holstering that shotgun. A lot of different display options with this guy. Now for his jacket or vest. You see, 
made of sort of a khaki color. It's got some pockets on the front, ripped on the sleeves. Sculpt and paint detail is fantastic, and it's made of kind of a stretchy-ish material. Here's Croc without the jacket, and here he is with the jacket on. Me personally, I'm going to use this guy without the jacket, without the gun, without the knife. He's going to be Killer Croc. More appropriate when he's shirtless. But definitely okay to have the pants on. I don't want to see any of that other stuff going on down there. Now that we're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height from bottom to the top of his head. And actually, his back stands a little taller than his head. He's standing at about 7 inches tall, which can translate to about 18 centimeters. Now for his articulation, starting with his head, it can sort of rotate from side to side. Can't really go up and down much. I mean, a little bit. Can't really go from side to side. He does have jaw articulation, which is fantastic. The way the teeth fit together is excellent. That's why he has the alternate necks. Low mobility there. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out less than 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. But you're not getting a huge range of motion there. Bicep cut below that. He's got a single jointed elbow, goes in all the way 90 degrees with rotation. His wrist can rotate and a little bit hinged as well. Torso, he's got a ball joint, rotate around, up and down a little bit. Another one is waist, rotate around. Looks like that's it, just rotation there. Legs, they're ball joints, but they go in and out a little bit there. Forward and back, about that much. He does have a knee joint, but it really doesn't go forward and back much at all. There is rotation. Ankle, forward and back, just a little bit there. Seems, oh, okay, maybe some hot water freed up. Moves a little more than I expected. He also has tilt rock there. And then his tail, one, two, three, four ball joints. Rotate, up and down, rotate. Up and down a little bit, rotate, up and down, rotate, up and down. As a whole, it can move, but it's a lot more limited than I would expect considering how many ball joints there are. Small little correction. Some of his joints are really tight. Mess with the leg a little more. His knee does have much more articulation than I initially expected, and I think. If I were to heat some of them up, I could probably really increase some range of motion in his torso and other various joints. Here's Killer Croc facing off against Batman. Here's Croc trying to chomp on Batman. He shoves his arm into his mouth to deflect the blow. And here are both versions of Crocker attacking both different paint variations of the three Jokers Batman. And you can substitute him with the Hush Batman, which actually looks even better. Killer Croc looks similar like this in the Hush storyline. And of course, both paint variations of the Hush Batman with both paint variations of Crocker. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other Killer Croc figures. Here they are. Next to a McFarlane Killer Croc figure from Arkham Asylum. McFarlane really needs to make one from the comics. And here they are. Next to all of my DC Direct and DC Collectibles Killer Croc figures. Then... Next to all of my Mattel Killer Croc figures. And here, next to an older Kenner Killer Croc. Now let's check them out. I see some other figures that hang out on my Killer Croc shelf. And I use them as different variations of Killer Croc. Here they are, next to a NECA Leatherhead. This is from the Ninja Turtles animated line. Then, next to a Marvel Lizard figure from the Spider-Man film. And here they are, next to a Mattel Bright Wyatt mutated wrestling figure. Here are all of my different Killer Croc action figures. I have a shit ton. There's only one aware of that I'm missing in the 6 and 7 inch scale. That's a DC Direct Killer Croc from an Arkham Asylum 4 pack. And not Arkham Asylum the video game, but an Arkham Asylum comic pack. It's the same as the one that I have to the left of the Crocker figures, except that one has orange pants. Of course, if anyone out there knows where I can get one or has one for sale, drop me a line in the comments below. Here they are, next to some different alligator figures that I have. Here they are, next to the NECA movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think these two Crocker figures would look good as sort of a movie version of Leatherhead. Now let's check them out, 
Next is some action figures from different various companies to see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you know which lines you can mix them with. These crockers are pretty big. I'm going to say they're the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work with smaller. And since I'm going to be using them with my Batman collection, I'm going to include as many Batman figures as I can during these comparisons. Here they are, next to some Jack-specific wrestling figures. And here they are, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Here they are, next to one of my wife's shoes. I believe this is a fake snakeskin shoe. Closest thing I can get to a gator shoe. And that reminds me, I really need to get me some new shoes. And here they are, next to some McFarlane DC Multiverse Batman figures. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman figures. And here they are, standing with some NECA Batman figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 collective Batman figures. Then, with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse Batman figures. And here they are, with some Mapex Batman figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, next to some SH Figure Arts Batman figures. And finally, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. Overall, these are some really nice alligator action figures. Crocker, Wild Hunter. For my purposes, these guys are awesome. They are fantastic Killer Croc action figures. Yeah, they'd work pretty good for Leatherhead as well. But in my universe, they are Killer Croc. Some annoying things about them. I just kept having to use hot water to swap out the neck, the tail, the hands, etc. I will say over time, the hands I can now swap without hot water. So it's kind of like they're fitting into the hole a little better. Articulation is quite stiff. Hot water also freed quite a bit of that up. A lot of the accessories are kind of useless for my purposes. The gun, the knife, the hat, the jacket. Although I do appreciate being able to have different options for Killer Croc. He sometimes has a ripped up shirt or jacket like that. Sculpt and paint job are absolutely phenomenal. That is the best thing this figure has going for it. It looks awesome. I love the hinge jaw. A little disappointed with the way they executed the neck articulation. But I get it. If I to rate these guys, I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10. Enjoying these guys every bit as much as I hoped I would. Maybe even a little more. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.